Disney Plus reveals plenty to get excited about, John. That is the headline on today's movie burner news. Yes, and the plenty to get excited about, Stephen, is of course the whole catalogue of TV shows which they are going to be putting onto this film, uh, on this service, I should yeah. say. Some debuting, some maybe coming further down the can, but it's an incredible array of plans you really have got put in place here, Stephen. You look at the photos of the actual service itself and it looks very intriguing, very slick and streamlined. I just hope that we are going to get this streaming service in the United Kingdom. I don't believe it's been announced yet that we are definitely getting it in the United really? Kingdom. Right, okay. I need to have a look at that while yeah. I maybe pass it over to you, Stephen. But yeah, yeah it's basically Kevin Feige uh, mentioned uh, during a presentation of the upcoming streaming service that he was there, I should say, but extremely enthusiastic about the opportunities that Disney Plus supplies. They went on to say that, uh, obviously, you've got the world of Star Wars that's thrusting us into yeah. The Mandalorian, set in between the period of Episode 6 and Episode 7, an unexplored period in the main and the cinematic side of things. So they're delving into that rabbit hole, or diving down into that rabbit hole for Star Wars. And with Marvel and the MCU sort of a things, those series they're going to be doing, uh, it's going to focus on the supporting cast instead of the main players like Iron Man and whatnot. You're going to get the likes of Scarlet Witch, Vision, Falcon, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. <laughs> I think he says yeah. it was announced as at one point. Yeah. Um, and just a whole host of other characters in there, Stephen. So I cannot wait to see the streaming surface hitting if we indeed are getting it here. We better. Hope Rupert Murdoch hasn't yeah. wrote in some deal as part of the Fox Disney merger that he gets to keep his grummy little hands on the... Some it's of the things that we're going yeah. to get here. I hope not. I'm looking forward yeah. to it. It looks I, very, very cool. I, I'm certainly looking forward to it, John, especially if we do get it. Um, this yeah. is the platform we've all been waiting for, uh, for these characters to be developed a little bit more. Um, I don't want to say their side characters are lesser characters, certainly not, but um, mm -hmm. in the grand scheme of things, they perhaps maybe the likes of the Winter Soldier. Uh, I want to know more about Bucky. I want to know more about Scarlet Witch. Um, the Star Wars television series as well. We're getting one, The Mandalorian, mm -hmm. set between, as you said, are set you know between episode six and seven. Yes. We're also getting the Rogue One prequel, which is I think still untitled. Is that correct? It is. Yeah. yeah. It's just called We've only Cassie found Randall, out. Yeah. 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 Alan Tudyk's coming back to play K two S O, which is great. We'll talk good, about really more good. of that on the Force Friday show, John. Yes. Um, and this just opens up the avenues for uh, these. You know, characters, storylines, and it kind of fills in the blanks as well. This is the the platform. Yeah. Um, Twenty year ago, all we could really put up with, um, I think that's the correct terminology. Yeah, with, yeah. So all we could put up with was video games filling in the blanks and comic books and of course the novels, which is yeah. not a bad thing no. if that's your thing. But um, your average cinema goer, television viewer, this is what we've been waiting for. Certainly that's my mm -hmm. my sort of angle on these things, John. Um, I do enjoy watching the films, the animated shows as well, more so than the, the novels and stuff. Like I've read a few of the novels, uh, the Chuck Wendig trilogy, which I thought yeah. was okay. Um, but this is where my heart lies in this uh, platform. I can't wait. Hopefully, fingers crossed, the UK are going to get this streaming service. Yeah, well, I've been reading the article, Stephen. I cannot see anything anywhere yeah. about the UK. They're yeah. saying I've, that the I've UK already it, has. Yeah. yeah, I've not heard it, but I've not, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we've already got some streaming service over here. Disney Life. It's not Disney Plus, though. It's shite, essentially. So they better get that sorted out. I yeah. want Disney Plus. And I will not be giving up my Netflix subscription. I will subscribe to this on top of Netflix because Netflix does their thing Disney do their thing looking again at a photo Stephen I may have that Amazing, flash, yeah. flash up just yeah. so people know if they're watching this Looks what the hell good, yeah. yeah just the layout and just that list of content at the top Disney Pixar Marvel Star Wars and even National Geographic yeah. I'd take Fantastic, that yeah. and below it you've got the likes of Coco Snow White Captain Marvel Free Solo Star Wars A New Hope it's incredible the content you're going to have on this streaming service it's going to be something to see and as I did say, Steve, the MCU side of things, just the fact that we're not going to be getting the likes of Daredevil. I don't want to do them a disservice. No. I've thoroughly enjoyed Daredevil on Netflix. It's a fantastic series, really well acted. Mm -hmm. um, the likes of Foggy and whatnot. Obviously, The Punisher. Yeah. We're going to get these MCU connected TV shows, um, standalone spin off TV shows, whatever the hell you want to call them. But it's going to be maybe a level above from Daredevil, as I did say. Scarlet I think so, Witch, yeah. Vision. The Winter Soldier. Yeah. I cannot wait to see The Winter Soldier. I didn't even realise he was getting a TV no, show. And okay. I, we got a little glimpse of the sort yeah. of production, the, the quality. Yeah. Um, if we're getting Mandalorian, know, Mandalorian style yeah. production uh, going on here in budgets, this is going to be a sight to yeah. really see, Stephen. We did get a brief little, we watched a behind the scenes, 
that celebration yeah. <laughs> of a Mandalorian sort of a sizzler trailer. We weren't yeah. supposed to see it, but we did see it, and my God, does that look good. Yeah. Uh, the production looks on point. We did see behind the scenes shots of the production, but just the actual quality of the cinematic stuff as well. It was, it was like a film yeah, uh, it was on TV fun. scale. It looks incredible. And let's not forget we're getting Lady in the Tramp debuting on this <coughs> service as yeah, well. I forgot all about yeah, that. Tessa actually, yeah. Thompson and Justin Theroux and whatnot. A whole host of fantastic actors lending their voices to that one. So there's everything and anything to get your hands into on this. And I really do hope, I pray to a God if he's up there that we get this Stephen. I yeah. think we will, John. I really do. I'm very confident we will. Yeah. Um, but listen, we'll move on to the yes. next article that came in from Variety this week, John. It's Taryn Egerton's Elton John biopic, Rocketman 2 premiere Rocket at Man, Cannes. Yes. This is uh, set for a May 16th world premiere at the film festival, John. Uh, we both did a uh, trailer reaction to it this. Did, yeah. I think as far back as our audio shows as well, we were talking about this mm -hmm. film when it first uh, appeared online. Uh, certainly one of our most anticipated biopics um, of uh, you know today. Um, yeah. I think uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. We both got some form of enjoyment. I of, did, yeah. Of that, this I one I it. think is going to be a little bit more grittier, a bit more surreal than uh, the Brian Singer slash uh, Dexter Fletcher film. Um, this one is obviously Dexter Fletcher's film, um, yes. so I'm glad to see from. He is getting this uh, film. He is going to be the one that's going to be uh, getting rewarded with his name yeah, finally. Uh, on this film title and the film itself. But um, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I think it's coming at a good time, uh, that period in Elton John's career that I think most people sort of enjoy. I don't think that's a you know a, a you know a bad it's thing not, to say. Not, you know I not. think every artist has their period. Yeah, the likes of Bowie, yeah. uh, you know. But it's not Dylan as well, baseball. you know. Uh, yeah, it's definitely not um, Pet Shop Boys. But listen, um, <laughs> yeah. this is the period that most people are interested in. And yeah. I think Elton John, if he was being honest, which is a, he's a very honest person, um, I think he knows that. And that's why it's focusing on this period in his career. Yeah, but Steve. Life. Yeah, exactly. Stephen, I find this very promising news that actually I'll choose to premiere this at Cannes Film Festival because that is a very open uh, sort of a festival. It's very. Uh, public and there's a lot of publicity yeah. there so it's go you go you're going to find out very quickly yeah. whether this is a turtle or whether it's a, a diamond <laughs> um, and I do wonder whether they're going to enter it into competition at Cannes Film Festival will it be finding it out for the coveted Palma Dior I think you, you pronounce it that's the top ranking competition for films uh, at Cannes Film Festival I presume it will be so hopefully we'll find out very quickly that this film is a very good biopic Film. It's going to be burnt, it's going to paint them as being ugly. We spoke about it before. Yeah. So, yeah. as you did say, it's de delving into Elton John's life when it was probably at his peak. It's certainly <coughs> his career was at his peak. But it's going to look at the earlier stages of his life as well when he was ugly. Uh, obviously, figuratively speaking, he wasn't doing uh, big, bombastic, sell sold out uh, no. stadium tours. And then we're going to see this interconnecting with uh, the, the story to uh, the storytelling. Uh, the, songwriting and stuff like that, yeah. the relationship he had with the people around about him. It's going to be very interesting. The guy had a very intriguing life, to say the least, full of debauchery, drugs, alcohol, everything, man. He was getting up to it all. So hopefully they delve into it. Hopefully it's a great performance from Tara Egerton. I've got all the, the confidence in that guy. I think he's a great singer. We've seen it in the trailers before. Yeah. I've come out for the film. He's lending his singing voice. i actually seen him perform with Elton John live. I think he was singing Benny and the Jets and he'd done it justice. So yeah. I'm very intrigued with this. I hope Dexter Fletcher gets all the, the credit he deserves after not getting Christ, didn't even yeah. mentioned at the Golden no, Globes. I think that was a and they directed half the film. Yeah. Well, I think yeah, technicality, yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right, Stephen. I think that was because of Clint Eastwood stepping in during a Western. So hopefully he gets uh, his name uh, up there, getting all the, the, pot, the plaudits and uh, the praise and stuff like that when it comes to. Uh, the award season, hopefully it's that good. Hopefully it's a similar to sort it. of a story to Bohemian Rhapsody. But I digress, Steve. Yeah, well, listen, we'll move on to uh, <laughs> uh, next article. It uh, comes in from Cinema Blend. It's, yes. The headline is John Wick 3 star thinks the franchise could continue for another 10 years. Now, mm -hmm. I think it was actually the director that was speaking on this article. Yeah, John, Chad that, Stahelski, yeah. Yeah, that, uh, you know, it, it could continue for the next decade or so. Uh, we know that obviously there's going to be good. a lot of workings there. Uh, uh, with this um, television series that's in the works as well, that um, I think did it say um, you know when that was announced that Keanu Reeves could be popping up 
in the television series as I well. Think, I think they did. I think they, yeah. they didn't come out and say as much, Stephen, but I think it was heavily, hint, yeah, it was yeah. heavily hinted at that he would yeah. make an appearance from now, time to time. I don't think he's going to be a main player. It's yeah. going to focus on the Ian McShane character, I think Winston. Yeah. And obviously that, he runs, he's a top man in the Continental. Continental yeah. Just the inner yeah. of that. Um, just getting back to the films ourselves though, John, um, it was a few years ago since the original movie came out, yeah. uh, which... Um, surprisingly blew me away I've got to be honest with you um, and I wasn't doubting Keanu Reeves couldn't you know, do the character justice I just felt at that point with enough revenge films out there um, I think at that point in my head I think the, the, the genre was sort of done to death yeah. but the sheer style of this film uh, this original film I'm talking about it was very um, slick it was very slick uh, the pace of it as well was amazing, and um, you could relate with the character as well. That's the most important part, especially what you know how it all triggered off. But mm -hmm. um, just the sheer style of the film uh, and the look, Keanu Reeves fantastic as well. Um, it warranted a sequel. I like the sequel. Still not as good as the original film, but still a good film. Mm -hmm. um, I'm eagerly awaiting to see this uh, fourth instalment. Yeah. But for this article to say this can continue on, kind of. Gives you kind of. A, a, is a that a spoiler? spoiler? Yeah. No, no, it's more going down the James Bond sort of franchise way where he's never going to die. Um, oh, I don't know. Because it's Ian McShane, Stephen, that actually quotes and he says, oh gosh, probably in 10 years John Wick would still be going. You never know, Keanu. 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 <laughs> he's still be running around in the Continental Hotel and everything by then. They're saying that he may even be uh, running it at that point. Uh, you, may, you may find out more about the high table, you may find out more about him and his background. Yeah. So he's saying, McShane, that he thinks Keanu Reeves in 10 years could still be playing John Wick himself. So who knows? He's certainly a, a model. We've established that. Keanu doesn't age. Yeah. Uh, the guy's been the same guy all the way back to the 1600s, yeah, no, if you look at the photos. No, I don't think they'll need any de-aging no, software for this chat. They will not, Stephen. But look, can it go on for 10 years? It possibly could. Such as the storytelling, it's very simplistic, let's be honest. It's just revenge, him fighting off swathes of um, sort of a hitman and stuff like that. And you can always get another puppy thrown into the, the fray to be massacred and set him off in another rage filled, yeah. uh, lustful uh, revenge story. So it could happen, it could go on for 10 years. And let's be honest, 10 years isn't a long time in film anyway. These films take three, four years to make, three yeah. years to make. So you're only going to get another three films if it's yeah. 10 years. Uh, I would like to see it end in a trilogy. My personal That's opinion. That's a natural assumption as well. I would John. like to see John Wick as the character end after a trilogy. Him go off and do something else. Maybe lead a normal life. Yeah, mm -hmm. walk off into the sunset with his Happiness, beautiful dog. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and see maybe the common character come in and take the role. Uh, something else, a spin off, like a Hobbs and Shaw spin off of John Wick. But look, I won't. I'm not going to sit here and say I wouldn't take more John Wick films in 10 years because I would. I love Keanu mm -hmm. and I love John Wick so I would take those slick visuals, that visceral violence, him shooting people with every manner of gun you can think of. Point blank, Using yeah. samurai swords yeah. on horses and on motorbikes. I ain't a good night. I ain't going to knock that back. I'll take that all day long. No. In 10 years time as well if I'm still here. Yeah, but listen John, we'll move on to our final article <laughs> this week and it comes in from Screen Rant. This yes. is uh, the headline itself is... <laughs> Terrifying. Uh, it's a <laughs> bright burn trailer plays before Peppa Pig movie here in the UK terrifies children now. Um, Peppa Pig. <laughs> just um, listen, John. Uh, oh, uh, thanks to a blunder. I think we knew that from the, the headline, uh, but thanks anyway for that screen rant. Um, that it left oh, some amazing. children terrified after a trailer for the upcoming film Brightburn played before a screen of the new <laughs> Peppa Pig movie. Now, um, we talked about Peppa Pig on obviously. Uh, MB box office, John, and you actually made a good point in regards yeah. to the age range of this film. <laughs> six months to six years old. Yeah, away. and it does mention in this article some kids, you know, as young as 10 months old were <laughs> affected by it. Now, um, I am going to play a straight man here because I, th I think um, this is unacceptable oh, in regards yes. to this trailer dropping. Um, someone's not done their homework, clearly. Um, right, bum, you know. <laughs> Someone's Maybe probably told them, uh, the, you know, it was going to be a Superman type story. Yeah. They thought, okay, well, that would tie in with Peppa Pig. <laughs> yeah. Some, yeah some, some capacity. Yeah, some you know. person quoted as saying, as soon as the staff on site were made aware of the situation, the programme was stopped and trailers were taken off screen immediately. Well, not immediately enough because people 
young children in this case were in tears yeah. and very subdued and couldn't enjoy Peppa Pig whatever the hell it is the festival of fun it certainly wasn't a festival of fun no festival for, of terror yeah festival yeah. of terror for these young children uh, it says they do sincerely apologise for any distress <laughs> that was caused well that's like locking the doors after the, the horse has already gone yeah. he's in the sunset yeah. uh, but look I find it hilarious Stephen because I've not got any children I don't go and watch Peppa Pig so I, I wish I did go and watch Peppa Pig now. I, <laughs> I really trailer, do. Yeah. I wish I could have been a fly in the wall when that trailer dropped. It would have been cries of absolute terror. That would have been amazing. I'd have yeah. been sitting Listen. like Chris Farley in that film. What film was it, Stephen? Was it um, Big Tommy Dad? Boy. Tommy Boy. Yeah. Was that the one where he was sitting at the, the school bus? Oh, no, that was, oh. uh, that was Billy, Billy Madison. Madison. Yeah. Sitting yeah. laughing his head off eating all of the young children's packed lunches. That would have been Chris Farley. And uh, Farley, that is his name, yeah, yeah Farley. I'd have been sitting laughing my head off at the back of that theatre where all these little kill yeah. uh, children were all. You know what they dying. say about uh, you know no, you know no publicity. You know or, or any publicity is good publicity. Um, certainly in this case, I think this might actually do Peppa Pig. Um, <laughs> it's box office uh, no harm intended because yeah. I didn't know until we did obviously MB box office chat um, earlier last week, John. <laughs> yes. I didn't know anything about this film. Um, you know, and you know my daughter was a big fan of. Peppa Pig she's kind of out yeah. that now but I didn't even know this film was coming out so I didn't know it was coming headlines out like this yeah. might have this a is... positive effect on the movie John yeah this has been done before apparently Stephen another film I'm trying to find out where it was some other film which wasn't even remotely age appropriate for uh, the film that was uh, the trailer that was being shown in front of I don't know what it was called it doesn't matter uh, but it's been done before <laughs> these young children have been terrified over here before by completely inappropriate age films, uh, range films or trailers dropping in front of them. I don't care, as I did say. I was terrorised as a young kid with it and arachnophobia and whatnot, so it's not done me yeah. any harm. I'm a perfectly rounded individual, so get that terror into their veins. Let them, th this is the future of filmmaking. These these people, these young children will Thank, grow up and yeah, have an affinity day, yeah. for horror. And they'll want to make great horror and it'll make them more rounded. Young children these days, Stephen, I'm going they're to take that up. soapbox off Yeah, they're wrapped job. up in cotton wool. They don't know what the hell's going on in the world outside. They're wrapped up from the terrors of paedophiles that are hiding listen, in bushes and stuff like that. Ah, that was a 90s but, kid. Listen, in all seriousness, John, um, <laughs> you were subjected to it yourself with, I, I don't know yeah. what age you were. I was about six, five six, or six. Yeah. I saw, um, before that, Freddy Krueger. Yeah, I saw Halloween, uh, the first, the, the original Halloween film, I think, when I was eight. Yeah. Um, my gran loved it. Didn't do you any harm. Yeah. Well, some might say. for a few months, yeah. but you're fine after I that. I couldn't sleep, yeah. yeah. Um, but apart from that, listen... <laughs> um, and I've still scared the spiders to this day, but it done me no harm, Stephen. <laughs> Give them it. That's yeah. what I say. Listen, that just brings us to the end <laughs> of this episode of Movie Burner yes. News. We Very would just one. like to thank you once again <laughs> for joining us, and we will be back again tomorrow with the blog rundown. <laughs>